We are now going to look at the next section of the syllabus which reads as the main steps in devising and implementing a research strategy. Research aims, selection of topic, hypothesis setting and revision, pilot studies. Sampling we'll be looking at in the next class. So here we are again, welcome to this new lesson. We want you to understand that sociology is a body of information based on careful collection of data, analysis, interpretation, and production of research papers and documents. We saw the different methods of investigation and collecting information earlier. So sociological findings can be verified and tested by other researchers. And therefore, what any scientist or social scientist writes is subject to verification. And sociology also, as a body of knowledge, is subject to verification. In this section, we are going to see how sociologists collect information and they develop a body of knowledge which we consider as sociological writings. A personal opinion is not necessarily a sociological opinion. Social writings are based on evidence and therefore both the positivist or the interpretivist are concerned with seeking evidence and conducting careful analysis. The positivist use quantitative methods whereas the interpretive sociologists use qualitative methods to gather evidence or data for their research. In this section, we are going to look at the steps in the conduct of research. We'll uh, look at how sociologists decide on the research aim, they select a topic and a method of investigation, setting hypothesis and pilot study. Usually a sociologist will study a problem that she or he finds interesting and worth investigating as the sociologist feels that it will help to better understand a social phenomenon. We are going to take three examples of research which has been conducted by eminent sociologists. Peter Townsend researching poverty to obtain an idea of the incidence of poverty in UK using a quantitative method. Durkheim was interested in the reasons that led people to commit suicide on suicide rate. He used a quantitative statistical method. Paul Willis studied why working class kids get working class jobs using a qualitative study. He studied 12 boys by staying with them, observing their day-to-day -day behavior and conducting regular unstructured interviews with them. Before starting a research, a sociologist usually has an idea of the problem that uh, she wants to investigate. However, the sociologist should identify one specific aspect of the problem. For instance, a sociologist may want to study the problem of poverty, but he must decide which aspect of poverty he wants to study. A sociologist can study many different aspects of poverty and the study can be both quantitative and or qualitative. Here's an example of how sociologists decide which aspect of a problem they're going to study. For instance, a sociologist might decide to study the extent of poverty. Here, they would wish to collect quantitative data collect information of how many people there are by region who suffer from poverty. Obviously this is a positivist approach which leads to the development of a statistical information from where the sociologist can explain the extent of poverty. There can also be other quantitative studies like exploring the reasons for poverty using a questionnaire asking people to identify reasons for poverty 
that they experience. This is also a positivist approach. The sociologist gathers statistical data which enables him to understand the reasons for poverty. There are other ways, for instance, some sociologists, especially the interpretive sociologist, might decide to find out how do people feel about poverty situations in which they find themselves. Here we ask people to describe their own situation and to, ex to explain to a certain extent from their perspective why they can't get out of poverty. This is more of an interpretive approach which should provide narratives and explanations of how people themselves perceive their own situation. Obviously this is a qualitative study. So you understand by now the sociologist first decides what to study and after that what aspect of the problem to study. After these decisions he has to decide which methods to use to collect data for the study. It can be a quantitative method, it can be a combination of quantitative methods, questionnaire or interview. The sociologist may also decide to use a combination of methods, maybe a quantitative method and a qualitative method. This is not considered here. This aspect of combination of methods we are going to study in another lesson later on. Next come the writing of a hypothesis. We have spoken about hypothesis before which is a statement made by sociologists about a relationship that exists between two factors which still needs to be verified. We can express a relationship between social class and success rate or social class and its influence on success rate in sports. Of course we don't use the word factors in sociology later on you will understand that in research we use the term variables. A better definition of a hypothesis is a hypothesis is a statement made by a sociologist about a relation that is deemed to exist between two variables which still needs to be verified. It is like an educated guess, that is a guess that a sociologist makes about the relationship that exists between two variables. Obviously the relationship may not hold at all times, thus we have results in terms of percentages, that is the extent to which the relationship might hold true. Let me take you back to the lesson that we did previously on the same issue. I gave you an example of how the sociologists develop a hypothesis on the relationship that might exist between success in education and social class. And we said by way of conclusion they might find out that even higher social classes children fail, lower social class children also succeed. There are other factors than class such as ethnicity and gender which are also important. So this is how the sociologist is able to support the hypothesis with which he started that is there is a relationship between success in education and social class. You should realize by now that the whole process of data collection is carried out for the purpose of verification. Once verified the sociologist can safely claim that she or he has an understanding of the problem and the findings are written down and published as a sociological research. Related to this is also what we spoke about the positivist approach who make use of the natural science method so they start with the hypothesis they verify the hypothesis using quantitative methods such as questionnaire and structured interviews Obviously 
everything doesn't go smoothly all the time. There are situations where they have to revise the hypothesis. If the hypothesis is not supported or not properly drawn from the theory, they might have to revise the hypothesis, carry out the data collection over again, and then reach their conclusions. So these are processes of the positivist, how they go about doing the research, planning their research. Let us now look at how the interpretive sociologist plan and carry out the research. As we said earlier, the interpretive sociologist do not use the natural science method and therefore they do not use the same procedures such as starting with a hypothesis. For them, the hypothesis comes later as they conduct their observations or semi-structured, unstructured interviews and they start getting an understanding of the situation then they might decide to come up with a hypothesis which they formulate therefore at a different stage at a time when they have developed enough understanding of the situation then they would proceed with further investigation and verification of their hypothesis they might also revise the hypothesis as they get more precise information until they reach their final conclusions. There is one more stage before the full study can really start. That's called a pilot study. What is pilot study? You must have heard about pilot study. It means that it's a trial run to find out whether everything that has been put in place is properly constructed and structured. In this case, the sociologist will try to find out whether the questionnaires or the interview schedule or the plan of observation. In other words, all the tools that have been developed for this study have been properly constructed, whether they can be implemented the way in which the researcher had imagined. That's the pilot study. And let's see how the pilot study is carried out. In fact, piloting is carried out on a small group of people, similar to the bigger sample on which the study will be carried out. So you see the little diagram on the side here, you have the researcher, you have the research sample and from it we draw a smaller group which would be used to conduct the pilot study. As we mentioned earlier, pilot is carried out to test the validity of the research tool, to ensure that the research tools that we're going to use will help to obtain the information it is designed for as per the aim of the study. Let us take two examples, piloting the questionnaire and piloting the interview. While piloting the questionnaire, the researcher seeks to find out whether the questions are properly written, whether people will understand the questions, whether the wording is correct and comprehensible, and the length of the questionnaire also is appropriate. Uh, whether people will be willing to answer the questions or will be able to answer the question within the time which has been planned for it or whether it should be amended. The interview schedule also once designed has to be tested for the same reason as we tested the questionnaire. At the same time it is necessary to see whether people will be able to complete the interview or whether the researcher will be able to complete the interview within the time scheduled. In this lesson we looked at sociology as a body of knowledge. The steps that the sociologist has to take in the conduct of research. We looked at the research aim, selection of research topics, steps in planning the choice of the right methods of data collection, the hypothesis, the approach of the interpretive sociologist and the pilot study. Let us now look at some of the assessment questions. As we said there are two marks, four marks, six, eight, ten and fifteen marks questions. 
in a 15 marks question it is necessary to assess the arguments for and against with a proper introduction and a conclusion here are some of the questions that you might get in the examination what is a research aim two marks what are the steps for doing research four marks what is a pilot study two marks Describe the positivist research design, six marks. Explain research aim with the help of examples, eight marks. What decision should a researcher take with regards to the choice of methods, six marks. Explain how researchers may study the same topic using different approaches, eight marks. Explain how positivists use pilot study 6 marks explain how pilot study is used by interpretive sociologists 6 marks explain why pilot study is an inevitable step in research 8 marks differentiate between positivist and interpretive approaches to research 10 marks and assess the view that positivist method is the best method of doing research 15 marks. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. We'll come up with another lesson very soon. Just to remind you that all the pictures used in this presentation are from upslash.com for which we are very grateful and thankful. Goodbye and see you soon.